I'm very social, very outspoken. And for me, I've seen the difference in not having the assistance and then having it. So for me, I'm very vocal. I'm probably like most chatty, Kathy person in my class. So I usually say, excuse me. Hi, I'm Brandy Wynn. <laughs> I need help. And they're like, oh my goodness, this is my special student because of my personality. My personality is very large. So I'm the whole class by myself. ADHD Rewired, episode 133. This is the show designed for those of us with really good intentions, but a slightly wandering attention. My name is Eric Tivers. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, coach, and speaker. The website is ADHDrewired.com. We know that starting is the hardest part, so let's get started. But first, let me tell you about this. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial. Go to audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired. Check show notes for link. Welcome back to another episode of ADHD Rewired. Today's guest is Brandy Wine. Brandy is a self-identified marketing maven in the making. She grew up in the Bay Area of the Golden State of California. Brandy has always enjoyed starting and running businesses. She was only 15 years old when she started her first business. She was diagnosed with ADHD when she was 30. Now 40, she's sharing her story, coming out with ADHD and enjoying her new found freedom from the box. Brandy, welcome. Thank you very much for having me, Eric. I appreciate it. It's Glad my, to be here. It's my pleasure. So I, I wanted to start out by asking you, what is this freedom from the box? Well, freedom from the box is now turned into a, I guess, a semi blog or a micro blog. I have a class, a marketing 345, a social media marketing class. So I'm doing um, using that as a platform to kind of, quote unquote, introduce freedom from the box. Freedom from the box uh, began as a um, when I was in my coaching class. Uh, shout out to Mindy Katz with C-H-A-D-D, Chad, yep. uh, here in Hampton Roads. So we were having our um, one of our sessions and she kind of talked to me about a couple different things. And I just told her, I said, I feel as though now that I've gotten my you know, diagnosis, know what's going on, ADHD was the diagnosis, that I have the freedom from the box that people believe me to be, the person that they believe me to be. So I feel free from being that person. And when, when we spoke before, you had said that you, were, you felt sort of uncertain, kind of nervous about sharing your story. Yes, I did. Um, because of the fact that mental illness itself has a s stigma. And then also um, in the minority community at that time when I was diagnosed, uh, I was kind of looked down and frowned upon. Mm -hmm. And from the different things that they said, as far as its characteristics, it made me feel as though I wasn't competent and that I couldn't, I felt as though I could do these different tasks, but I just didn't know how to complete them. So I felt as though I really couldn't kind of quote unquote, not to be dramatic, but kind of go on. So I know obviously listeners can't see this. Brandy's African-American. And um, it, it is clear if you ever go to a Chad conference that there is an underrepresentation of minority groups in ADHD. And, and as you sta stated, probably most other uh, issues around mental illness. So what has been your family's and your community's response to you coming out uh, as having ADHD? I would say it would be um, some people who kind of know me as I explained, explained my journey to them. They say, oh, that's why you're so, quote unquote, crazy. And then some people say to me, you know, because of the, the work that Chad and the other organizations have done to kind of get the mental illness awareness out. Some people are like, oh, OK, you know, I understand. And then the um, ongoing joke sometimes with my family is, have you taken your meds? Because sometimes they'll say I'm kind of loopy and I'm very chatty. And uh, for them, it's kind of like they kind of just they kind of start, starting to kind of get the hint because, of course, I've had it my whole life. But uh, being di diagnosed as an adult, they kind of are starting to notice, you know, a little bit more of um, the difference in when I have the medication and when I don't. So what, what's your brand of, of ADHD? How does it affect you? For me personally, uh, I love it. <laughs> It gives me excuse to be because for me, the biggest thing um, that I always looked into was 
what is ADHD as far as what part of it is the ADHD brandy and then what part is brandy? Um, a lot of my symptoms, I'd say, and then as well as my personality, my personal personality, I guess just to say, I just couldn't tell the difference. And so uh, the only thing, there's a couple of different things that are indicators that let me know that, uh oh, and it's time for me to take my medication or that it's necessary for me to um, do some of the different exercises I've learned over the years and things like that. Like what? What kind of exercises? Well, like we did before, uh, before we began uh, breathing, pausing, you know, allowing myself to understand, uh, like as I'm going through, I'm a college student right now, currently in college, when the pressure builds up, just to take a moment, relax and say to myself, we can do this. My favorite tagline, of course, is winner because of my last name is, it's really win. But people say brandy wine all the time, but I consider myself a winner. So I'll say, you are a winner. I'll get in the shower and do like motivational speeches to myself. And that usually calms me down most of the time. How long have you been doing that for? A long time. <laughs> a long time. Long time. It's, it's funny because when I am working with people and, and uh, encouraging them to use these kind of statements of affirmation, when beginning doing something like that, if you if you aren't someone who has done it in the past, it feels really weird and awkward. Right. Right. But as right. you do it more and more, it's you know, you're you're rewiring your brain and you're you're building familiar neural pathways. And right. Right. you know, it's we already have the stories we tell ourselves that kind of run in a loop in our mind. And if they're, if they're not helping you, then it's like changing your narrative. Right, right. That's understandable. Yes. So you're, you're now 40, you're yes. a, about a semester away from yes. finishing college, Ooh, yes. getting your bachelor's <laughs> degree. Yes, yes, yes. Um, how long have you been a student for? Been a student, oh my goodness, I've been a student. Uh, in, in, was- in a formal way. Okay, yes. I've been a student uh, since I was 18 uh, and then um, kind of picked up, put down my college um, uh, dreams, our aspirations, and then uh, did a various other things as far as other licensure and things like that. And then got back into college, university you know, type of college. Got back into that, I would say probably five, six years ago. And now I've completed the AA portion of it, which is um, got my AA liberal arts uh, degree. And then uh, concurrently went to uh, complete my bachelor's marketing. And then I'll go on to the MBA after that. So I'm just going, going through it. (laughs) Wow. wow. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. What's for you, what's been the best part about doing, uh, going through, uh, college now with that, uh, the awareness of having ADHD? I would say that the best part of it is that things have changed. People are more understanding as far as my counselors, advisors, uh, instructors, uh, the difficulties that I are challenges that I may be facing. And I'm more comfortable coming out and telling them, hey, excuse me, I need help. (laughs) Um, I'm not afraid or uncomfortable. And it doesn't make me feel less than a student. They don't treat me any different. They might, if they see me kind of a quote unquote messing up, then they'll kind of tell me, hey, Brandy, you're you're doing this, you're doing that. But so far on a roll, uh, straight, pretty much straight through. Um, I've had a couple dips lately, (laughs) but I was about 3.8, 3.8 GPA uh, honors when I graduated both times. And um, it's just been, it's been phenomenal. So um, there's challenges, but I've overcome them. When you talk to your professors about, uh, about having ADHD, what do you say? Like, how, how do you, from like the beginning of your class to uh, just share with us a little bit so listeners can also get an idea who are, who may be in college currently, what you do to advocate for what you need um, in, as a student? Well, one thing about me, um, you guys can't see me in person, but if you know me personally, you understand I'm very social, very outspoken. And for me, I've seen the differencing in not having the assistance and then and then having it. So for me, I'm very vocal. I almost I'm probably like the most chatty, Kathy person in my class. So I usually say, excuse me. Hi, I'm Brandy Wynn. <laughs> I need help. And uh, they're like, oh, my goodness, this is my special student because of my my personality. My personality is very large. Uh, So I I almost I'm I'm the whole class by myself in a good way. Uh, And then uh, we have an ADA compliance office uh, with St. Leo University. They um, the young lady that I have there, she and I are very close. Uh, Miss Christina, I think her name is Christina. I can't say her last name, Giller. But anyway, she's a compliance officer. And what she does is um, she writes letters. Uh, in announcing to my professors, you know, the situation. 
and then um, letting them know that I need extra time, you know, additional time to complete uh, exams and things like that. And what they do is in the beginning of class, it's my responsibility to go up to them and say, hey, pull them to the side after re reviewing the syllabus or talking about the courses and say, hey, I'm Brandy Wynn. This is the kind of assistance that I need. And um, is it possible? Or, you know, what accommodations can we make? And if there's anything further that I need, it's for me to inform them prior to the due date uh, of the situation. Let them know that I need more uh, time or I need to have a, a different type of book or lighting or be away from the class or what have you, whatever the accommodations I need. You ever uh, renegotiate assignments? Most of the time I do. And the good thing is, uh, luckily, I have a very good rapport as far as uh, with the teacher, the one on one relationship, and then also um, my track history. So it's not as though I'm a, a goof off type student. You know, I don't like I have it like I'm not trying to say it like that, but I'm on a roll. So when I ask for different things uh, because of my truthfulness in it or honesty, uh, they really don't second guess me. And sometimes I think that they're just kind of like, whatever, you know what I mean? Because um, it's not, I don't really ask anything like, hey, I skipped an assignment or whatever. And I, I have fallen behind several times. Mm -hmm. I have, I've, I've uh, taken three classes. I take eight week courses. So three classes, very, very, very strenuous. And um, I've let them know I have fallen behind. Um, and I'm very honest uh, and very open. I'm, I have fallen behind. I need additional assistance. Would you mind? Never, never say anything about the, the illness itself. I always say it's me, you know, personally. And then you they say, it. yes. And then they say, oh, my special student. <laughs> and then they, then they, then they, you know, they acknowledge and whatever I say and ask for, because I have acknowledged that I've screwed up, I fulfill the tasks, you know, take, and they see that. That is such a powerful message too. I think the, and, and I think that one that, a lot of people I think are really afraid to do is to own right. the screw up. And there's, right. you know, it, then it becomes the elephant in the room when you don't. And it's when, when you own it. And I think owning screwing up takes courage. And, right. I, and right. I think it's, re, it's almost always received that way as well. So I'm glad to hear that you've had the, uh, the positive experience of, of your professors helping you when you, when you own that, Hey, I'm, I'm behind or, um, and not waiting so long to, to where it feels like overwhelming where you have no idea how to, you're going to get caught up. And the reason why I'm just a quick ad for that, Eric, the reason why I was able to do that for one was I was in a situation where I did have a professor who said, because you have screwed up <laughs> and you didn't tell me ahead of time, you are going to fail this, this test or what have you. And from that experience, I said, Hey, and then another thing also too, with my, with my classmates, because my classmates, I saw that it wasn't that I was ADHD labeled or anything like that in my own personal mind. It was that we were all the same, even though I had ADHD, they were still in the same boat as me. We were, we were pretty much quote unquote failing together. So uh, I didn't feel so different. You know, at first I felt like, Oh, I'm the oddball. I have the, you know, the hat on, but no, when I saw my other students, you know, coming out and saying, Hey, I'm failing. Does anybody else feel the same way? I felt human. You know what I mean? I felt a part mm -hmm. of the group. Yes. Is that part of what this idea of, of, uh, freedom from the box sort of is it's just having the courage to get away from what you think people are going to be thinking and just sh kind of share your story and connect yes when i some people when i've spoken to them before um and when they look and they say well you know when, when you see a person that has a illness or a disability per se you, some people assume that they look totally different than the norm which is a person you know two eyes you know that, that, that thing and then for me when they see me uh, they say, you look quote unquote, pretty quote unquote normal. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? You don't look like you have a problem. And, uh, and I say to them, I don't, I don't at all. I just have a disability, meaning that, you know, and I have to explain it to them. Mm -hmm. I love walking into it. And I believe also a large part of it is my age. And I'm just thankful to have the personality that I kind of have. It just somehow we just kind of go together. Me having it, I just kind of have owned it and dealt with it. And then I'm kind of like, I'm already an individualist anyway. So it kind of makes me feel special. <laughs> like I have a special unique tool that no one else has. So it's kind of fun. <laughs> so you really make it work for you. Yes, I do. I do. I do. <laughs> it's like a fashion statement. Yes, I do. So you were going to a, uh, a, a Chad meeting and you were first asked to speak about having ADHD, right? How yeah. long ago was that? 
Oh, long time ago. Uh, it's been, uh, I guess it's been like close to my diagnosis. So probably like 31 ish or whatever. When I started seeing Mrs. Uh, Katz, mm -hmm. uh, we talked about it and she saw how vocal I was, uh, how, how comfortable I was speaking in front of crowds. And uh, she asked me, she said, Hey, would you ever want to tell your story? And I'm like, what story? And she's like, the journey, the freedom from the box. And I'm like, ah, I don't, I'm not exactly sure. And then I had a, uh, I guess it probably about, I guess it's been like a year or so. I had a, uh, a chance to, I was invited to speak. We were doing like a women's day type of program and everybody was talking about their business, which I don't have at, the, at this time. And of course that's my passion. And then I spoke about, you know, my illness. I was like kind of like a sidebar just as far as women and renewing themselves and, you know, uh, all the different things that we do and all that kind of good stuff. So this was my, this was my quote unquote uh, speech to them, you know, talk about. So, so you, you just referred to um, your illness. Uh, do you refer to ADHD as an illness? Um, I do sometimes because of the, um, just because of the way that it's labeled, mm -hmm. um, it, it depends on how I'm speaking about it. I might say a disability. I might say, you know, an illness. Or I, might, I don't usually say mental illness. I just say an illness. Mm -hmm. Or I might say a challenge or, you know, a hurdle. Or you know, It depends on how, how I'm speaking. But the one thing that I was taught when we had a Chad meeting was never to say that. I think the way they said it, if I can say it correctly, was that I'm not ADHD. I have ADHD. So that's saying that, you know, when they say that, you know, I'm ADHD, it's not saying that I am it, mm -hmm. I have it you know. It's, it's the idea of using uh, person first language. And um, I, I just recently listened to a really, really good book. And it wasn't about ADHD, but it was actually about um, more about autism. The book was called oh. Neurotribes. Fascinating, fascinating book. And one of the people that this guy interviewed for this book, who's an adult um, uh, on the autism spectrum, sort of talked about how part of this sort of the neurodiversity movement wanted to sort of take back these these, uh, these labels and sort of turn it on its head and diagnose quote unquote normal people as neurotypical. Right? Wow. Okay. With, with the idea of, you know, these people who are, are, are obsessed with social customs and, and and manners and politeness and what other people think about them and do this, it, they sort of like spoofed it, right? Wow. Um, and so she, this, this person that was interviewed and, and talked about this was that, you know, they want to be able to, to refer to themselves not as a person with autism, but as autistic. And yes. so, so I think it's, it's a really interesting thing because from the, you know, I'm trained as a, as a licensed clinical social worker and we are, it's in our, from our first class to the last class, it is for a person first, you're a person with X, Y, or Z, you know? But I hear a lot of people in both the autism community as well as in our ADHD community who really like they understand the differences and they still want to self-identify as they are ADHD versus they have ADHD. Right. And I guess my thought on it is if you're talking about yourself, do what feels right for you. Right. Right. Um, but if you don't have ADHD, then I don't think you have the right to say um, those, you know, the, the ADHD are over there. It's, you know what I mean? So it's language is nuanced. I think it's interesting, but I think it's something that we should have conversations about because it's not this black and white, uh, sort of, uh, thing, you know, it's the, the, cause I, I've gotten pushback from people about my, I don't want to say insistence on person first language, but the, how important that is for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I have had pushback and that just tells me, you know what, people think about these things in a differently. And I think that the more we sort of talk about, all right, so when you hear someone, you know, say, I am ADHD, what does that mean to you? Like, what, why does that upset you? Right. So it, it just, it's just a really sort of interesting uh, dynamic. Yes. Yes. So now, do you have this, like a, a, a story? Like if you were to like, do you ever think about giving like a Ted talks and telling what's, what's, what's the Brandy Wynn story of ADHD? I would say yes, I do. Uh, of course, <laughs> and I and I laugh with with if my ADHD community can understand this. I don't remember it all, um, most of it, a lot of it I've documented, um, and of course I have you know the literature that I've received from my uh, therapy sessions and things like that. But um, I do have a story, and I could probably give a TED talk. The only thing that I'm always concerned about is um, with this day and age, 
the wording and some of the jargon. I'm just a straight shoot from the hip type of girl. Mm -hmm. I guess it's my California relaxed attitude. And uh, with that personality, speaking in front of people, um, I might not have the medical terms or I might say something that may or may not be offensive to a certain type of person because of the way that I maybe said it. Um, so, um, but I do, yeah, I mean, I mean my, so my story is pretty much freedom from the box, it's, a, it's my blog. Well, I had um, a, a past guest on this show who was actually in one of my, my coaching groups who did it, who did a TED talk, Stephen Tanti did a great, great TED talk. Okay. And there was one part, and we talked about it on the show, there's one part of his TED talks where he kind of snuffs the idea of medication and, and, ah, whoa. <laughs> right? and he, he, he came on the TED talk uh, on the, the, on the podcast and talked about how much he regretted that part of the show. Or right. of, his, of his talk, because it was sort of where he, I think he was 19 when he gave that talk. And that's sort of wow. just where he was at, at that point. Yes. Um, so it's, you know, it's, I, but I think that he really did a great job of sort of sharing his personal story and about how this is just misunderstanding of how, you know, teachers and the rest of the world really look at ADHD. So, you know, yeah. I think that if that was something that you wanted to do, I think if you've got one or two professionals who really know ADHD and, and can, you know, kind of go over your talk with you, you yes. know, it's, and kind of fact check you, right? Yes. It, yes. Then why not? You know, it's a, when, when I hear someone who like loves this idea of have, of them being this big personality, I'm like, well, that's someone that should be on the stage. Yeah, well, I when I talked to uh, Mrs. Katz um, regarding, uh, I think we were, we were going to be doing some hosting at um, chat, a chat conference. Matter mm -hmm. of fact, I think it was in Orlando at the time. And she said, Brandy, why don't you speak about it? And of course, my platform was going to be double minority because of, I'm, Af I'm African-American and I'm also a woman. And so speaking for the African-American uh, and women's community, and that would be, you know, um, I think it was minority awareness or something like that was one of the different things they were going to be speaking about, one of the topics. So I would kind of fill in for that. And uh, we talked about it, but unfortunately with me, I just started school and um, scheduling, but, you know, I wasn't able to do it because of scheduling purposes, but I'd always talk to her about it as I'm winding down now and taking a, I guess, I guess a quote unquote, a quote unquote break. But now that I'm doing it, I'm, I've, thought, I've thought about it. I've you know, done, it, especially since I've, I've spoken about it, you know, regarding it and just casual conversation, um, more so for people to be able to just identify with, not so much more on the medical side, because I'm not a doctor, of course, but just as a person, just speaking as a, you know, as a, a participant and just saying, hey, I'm Brandy Wynn. I am an adult ADHD uh, person. And uh, then I'm also a college student. And these are the challenges or different things that I've kind of gone through are my journey, you know, with ADHD. So. What are um, in your sort of current this relationships now? Do you have do you have a are you married? Are you going through? No, single as I can as I can be. <laughs> okay, so looking at some of my notes, and sometimes when I take notes when I'm when we have these conversations uh, before the actual interview, I'm, I'll write a word down and then I'll look back at it and be like, I have no idea what that means. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So I just yes. wrote down relationships. Oh, that's, that's all. That's all I wrote down. I'm like so. Oh. <laughs> horrible horrible i'm the worst ever i'm the worst ever we, we talk about that because you're smiling as you're saying that you know, I'm, I'm smiling i'm smiling about it because of the fact that it's it's a sensitive subject with me people not 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 like i can't speak about it but it's just i don't even deal with it and i believe i attribute to a lot of it to me and my mindset i'll say like that because of the trying to stay focused on my goal with what I have going on. And then of course the challenges that come from my ADHD, <laughs> it's very difficult for me to stay focused and then also to stay focused on his needs. Um, my guy, whoever would be, it be. Mm -hmm. and I guess is, <laughs> I don't want to say this to the listeners, but <laughs> be honest with you, what you're about to, <laughs> yes, I, I'm about to. I just can't decide sometimes. I don't like just one person. <laughs> so, it's very difficult for me because of the fact that I have not found, let's just say, I have never found Mr. Right. And um, I'm not picky. I just, I, I feel as though when he and I finally meet each other, that he'll stimulate my interest. It's hard to keep my interest. Let's say like that. Let me say it like that. It's very hard to keep my interest. And I like you for about five minutes. And then I'll say, you know what? I, I like, I like the other guy. 
Yeah. I can just imagine that there's certain things when I hear when I hear my guests sort of talking about certain things where they have that look on their face like I can't believe I just said that. Yeah. Where yeah. I'm just imagining the, the listener who's listening to that <laughs> and saying, "I'm the, I feel the same way." So I'm sure right. that you just gave right. a whole bunch of people a me too. Right. Um, so right. And, and so thank you for for sharing <laughs> that. Uh, it's, it's one of those things where it's like oh, I don't really want to admit it, but then when you realize that like. You're not alone at all with that. Yeah, yeah um, I've had good. a number of guests in the past talk about how they get bored in relationships, even just in friendships too. They just get they get bored and they want to move on, and it's in that sort of part of that that ADHD spectrum is that it's you know that we have a kind of a high sensitivity to boredom. We don't do yes. deal with it real well. Yes, and a lot of times when people see me with my association, marketing association, I am a the network, networking events uh, social chair. So, of course, that goes with my personality. And people used to always label me as a fun girl, um, but I was never serious. And they never knew there was a business side of me. So when I got my degree and I put it on Facebook, I did my posting. They're like, you went, you're in college? You, you were in school? I'm like, yes, I do have brains. But it was with my personality as though, you know, you never can catch her. She's always, you know, she's not a one guy woman. She's always here. She's always there. And I say, you know, it's just that I ha I don't know as far as my interests, you know, I, I'm interested in you for about three, four minutes. And then I say, you know what, I want something different. And it doesn't have to always be relationships, but they just I've never found anything that's kind of held me, I should say, and made me say, you know what? I might take a second stab at it. I've never found that. And unfortunately, 40 years old, no children, uh, single. I smiled because of the fact that that's like, um, I guess, a sensitive subject as far as, as far as I haven't even dealt with it. I don't deal with it at all. I don't even entertain it. I just stay focused on my on my, on my business. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll, we'll move forward then. And, uh, and okay, thank God. you for sharing what you did. All right, listeners. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to me. <laughs> uh, I just think it's amazing what, what guests come on my show and, and share with, with so many people. And I just, uh, it's just awesome. You know, it's like there's this element of, of tribalism, I think is, is what it is, where it's like we feel safe knowing that the people that are going to be listening to this show are people who get it and people who want to learn more and understand. Right. You know, it's, I don't think people are going to come and listen to, to this show to try to like out somebody. Um, right. You know, it's, I sure to hope not anyways, but I think as, uh, as you stated, if you, if you own it, then nobody could take that from you. Right, 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 right. right. And you have that ability. Um, to me at this day and time of the world, we have so many different things that are going on. I believe it's the best time to be able to own whoever you are and feel comfortable in your skin. So. I absolutely agree with that. Yes. Um, you know, it's, it's vulnerability and authenticity, you know, and I, I think it does have its, its limits, but it's, um, I think for a very good, like, I think for lots of really good reasons that it, it is it's sort of in vogue. Um, but I don't yes. want, I don't want to say it that way. Cause that sounds sort of like it's a fad, right, right. but I think that as maybe as a, a culture, as a society, we're sort of getting tired of trying to be someone who we're not right. cause it's, you know, we only have, we only have one life. So it's like, let's just right. be who we are and, and celebrate it. And, you know, it's like we all have challenges, whether it's ADHD or, you know, just something that's not even diagnosable. We all, we all have challenges. And if we try to, you know, pretend like we got our mm together, you know, right. it's like, who is that helping? Right. And I think the thing also, too, is in the age of reality TV, of course, that's helped us out. And then I, I look at it more so as I want to be someone that is identifiable. Uh, I want the average person to feel comfortable um, because I know for me, the large, the biggest thing that helped me was of course, we know the cycle of um, when you get the diagnosis, we read the books. Uh, the first step of course is denial. Not me, can't be me, you know, not Miss Perfect. And uh, I don't even look like, you know, there's anything you know wrong or anything going on. And so for me, the easiest thing was to go online do the research. When I did the research, and I read Miss Sari Salden. I just said to myself, hey, I am OK. And it's going to be OK. It's going to be a learning process. It's going to be a curve. There will be some challenges, but I'm going to make this my journey because there's nothing else I can do. I can either deal with it or I can run from it. And I don't run. I'm a winner. So I don't run. <laughs> and I know that uh, Sari Salden's book uh, for, for women is was really groundbreaking and life changing yes. for so, so many women yes. with ADHD. God bless you, Sari. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you helped me out. <laughs> and I know she's helped a lot, a lot of people. All right. So let's talk a little bit about you as an entrepreneur. And uh, so you started that. your first business when you were 15. Yes, my mother is in, uh, in real estate. I'm um, sorry, it's my mom. And uh, she had um, this concept of uh, having this uh, cleaning business. And of course, I'm young. I'm always, you know, I'm, I'm spoiled. And um, I always beg for money. So she said, hey, you don't know what you're going to do with your life. Let's, let's come together and put something together. So I guess I got a taste of uh, entrepreneurism from her. And then um, next thing I know, I built this business. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I didn't build it. She built it. I worked it and owned it. Uh, it was BC. BNC Enterprises or BC Enterprises. It was a cleaning business. She's in real estate. We cleaned uh, foreclosed homes, my sister and I. And my sister, she kind of got tired of doing it. So I just kind of did it with her, my father. And my father, he's, he's C for Charles. So he just walked into the C. So we, I enjoyed it. All right. How long did you do that for? I did it for probably about a year or so. Uh, I, I got into cosmetology. <laughs> you know, I, I got bored. <laughs> so I, I got into cosmetology, trying to find my way as a young lady. Didn't want to go to college because I had a learning disability. Well, to me, the portion of it, for me, it affected me as far as learning, retaining mm -hmm. information. And so since I had a, I, I was saying to myself, a, a learning disability, it was uh, learning difficulties. I decided to ignore it, ignore it because I didn't understand what it was. I just knew I had a difficult time with learning information and retaining information. So I went into cosmetology, became a cosmetologist, supposed to be on the stage, color specialist. And that's the reason why I stopped with the BNC Enterprises business. And what did you do after that? Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, then, uh, to be honest with you, I've done so much stuff. Then I believe after that, I think I got insurance. I did some Mary Kay stuff. A lot of, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, MLM marketing, mm -hmm. uh, network, network marketing, whatever. And, uh, I, I did all of them, all of them. And then, uh, sales. It's, it's not a pyramid scheme. It's a yes. triangle operation. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Car sales, a loan officer, uh, when got that licensure, I've done a lot, a lot of different things at that time. And then, of course, schooling throughout uh, college, a little bit here and there to satisfy mommy and daddy. And then just breaking free and saying, forget it, I can't do it. Um, and jumping into something different. So, yeah, I've been all over the place. I've done a lot of stuff. Yeah. Know, knowing who you are now, can you look yeah. back at, at all your jobs? Yes. And is there one job you can look at in particular and say, I cannot believe I even did that for a minute? You know, to be honest, uh, no, because the thing about me is that um, I've been fortunate. Uh, I come from a suburban background, uh, so I haven't had to, quote unquote, work or scrounge for money. I'm sorry, I keep saying quote unquote, but it, it, I'm just trying to make it understandable. Um, I've never had to really scrounge for money, um, so I've never been hard up for cash type thing. So I picked and choose what I wanted to do, because that's one thing about me. I, I have a queen bee boss mentality. <laughs> so I want to do what I want to do. You know what I mean? So I pretty much chosen what I wanted to do. Um, nothing sleazy or anything like that as far as like, you know, uh, working at some place or that I didn't care for, or, you know, some kind of you know, menial task. It's pretty much been, I've kind of been the boss in a lot of different things that I've done or had the ability to be. Um, so most of them I've enjoyed. Uh, it's been something even, that the, even the work in, you said you did some stuff with insurance. Yes, the insurance was, you know, the, now the insurance I didn't like because it was a real job <laughs> and I had to be there on time, uh, miss late for everything, can't get, get herself, you know, together, don't like to wake up lazy. Um, and, uh, hey, hey Brian, you're, you're not lazy. Don't, don't, yeah, don't call right. yourself lazy. You're, you're not lazy. You're not stupid. I love that book. That's my favorite. <laughs> but, uh, just, uh, that was a real job and that changed. That was one of the turning points. Uh, and plus I was becoming older. So, um, that, that job was the, now that I look back at it and what it was trying to teach me and prepare me for, um, I'm very thankful for it. And the, the time I was going through, I couldn't stand it because mm -hmm. I had to wear a uniform. I had to get up. Uh, and I was known in my, my at my my uh, department everybody knew brandy they said we don't know what she's gonna wear today we don't know what she's gonna look like you know i mean i i had a certain thing that i did you know so yeah i'm a, I'm, I'm a special character anyway <laughs> so you're you're graduating here uh come winter time yes what, what do you want to do you know what? And I love this answer. I have no idea. <laughs> that's my truthfulness. I'm not exactly sure where I want to go, what I want to do. Uh, that's a freedom of, as well. It's another por portion of the freedom, my favorite 
phrase. Um, and then, but I know I want to get the MBA. I have to, uh, because of course this whole journey with college and being in business uh, and marketing, it means nothing. 40 years old, you know, uh, track history. Uh, it's, it's, it's nice, but it's, it's very, it's not valid as far as I've been, um, it's older, a lot of the things that I've done. So having that, I guess I wouldn't say deficiency, but not having so much work history in itself, you know, because I've been an entrepreneur and different, various different things. Um, I, I need to have the MBA, you know, and it just, it sets me, it sets a stage for who I am and the knowledge that I, it, to me, it's a God given talent. I never went to school to learn what I learned for business, you know, as far as business, I just picked it up along the way. So, you know, you know, and, and I wonder too, like, as someone who has a very entrepreneurial sort of a, a, a spirit and sort of likes to do things, you know, your own way, which I think is sort of a, the the anthem of entrepreneurs, like yes. it's my way and I don't want to have to respond to any bosses and I want to show up, you know, if I screw up, that script was <laughs> one client and right. it doesn't fire me for the entire job, you know. It's, right, right, right. That's my excuse, <laughs> you know, and the entrepreneurism also it is my, uh, and I would say to people, this is my personal thing. It's my, it's my crutch uh, because of the fact that I know the challenges and that I, I, I face and I know the difficulties that I experience personally. And so since I do, I don't want my, I don't want to say my excuse, but my reasoning for it is I'm an entrepreneur. I'm the boss and it makes me feel more comfortable and it helps me out. So with my, with me, I want to make things easier for myself. Mm -hmm. I've gone through numerous things when I've done things for other people, but now it's my turn to say, this is what I'd like for my life. I know the different, different, um, challenges or issues that I face and uh, I know how to overcome it by being the boss, you know, if possible, you know, are working a job that's kind of flexible. So I'm wondering too, because I you know I I follow a lot of different sort of entrepreneurs uh, in, in the podcasting space, and you know I've heard many sort of thought leaders in entrepreneurship saying that you know things like MBAs aren't even that important anymore as an entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah. Have you know so what with sort of okay so there's this idea floating around, right? And yet you still want to pursue your MBA. How come? Well, I, I'll be, this is candid, honest, uh, because of my track history, <laughs> because of my journey, I've seen both sides. And as, as I mature and I am self-sufficient, I am single by myself, uh, meaning that I don't have a partner, you know, of any sort. I said to myself, I want to be secure. Uh, I've had the assistance of my family um, for a large part of my life. And so I've always had that kind of cushion. And now that I won't have that security cushion, uh, I know better than to just jump out there and say, okay, you know what? I am trans trans you know, transforming my life uh, and things that I've done. I'm older and, and I've, I've gone through these different experiences. Let me go ahead and lay this foundation properly. And then not look at it as uh, it's just pretty much just a backup backup tool. If things don't go well, uh, when I decide to jump out again and become an entrepreneur, um, then I can always fall back on my degree because I have that, you know, I would, I would have that at that time. And then the MBA portion is because of the fact that I'm already on the roll. I love school. I identify very well with it and I love my actual university. So I said, Hey, and they keep on, I think they keep twisting my arm and saying, you know what, you're this close, you're this close. Why not do, you know, the BA or why not do the MBA? So it's an idea for me. Um, and it depends on the, you know, uh, my, my next experience. If I get something that says I don't really need to have it and I feel secure not having it, then I may or may not go back. You know, I don't know, but you know, who knows what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting this one, I'm getting the BA portion. I know that part. And you you know, we say on the podcast that starting is the hardest part, but but yes. finishing is right up there with, with hard. And you're completion. completion. <laughs> yeah, it's like you get, you know we get to 96, 97 percent done, yes. and then it's like all right, let's go let's go do the next thing. And it's like, well, no, it's because it's the finishing. It's so detail oriented, and it's often no longer interesting or exciting. You right. Know? So it's like everything that makes it hard for us to to do. But it's just like bringing it through to the finish line. Yes. And um, I think you mentioned that that was one of the things that you're sort of you mentioned earlier that you were sort of in a dip right now. Right. Yes. Um, and I and I'm a believer. I am a Christian. Um, and for me, I have become very, very close. And that's probably why I don't have a relationship with anybody else, because I have had my relationship with God be challenged, tested mm -hmm. in the faith. And I've literally uh, quite a, kind of candidly, I've prayed. 
Um, and it's nothing but prayer and you know, me and Jesus, <laughs> that's all I got. And I say that because of the fact that I believe this was his goal for me. This was his, what he wanted from me. And this was uh, what I was supposed to be doing with my life. As far as the schooling portion, I needed to have this foundation. And so when I started this journey, I, I, I say this very openly, I don't know how I got it. I don't know. How, I mean, I should say, I, I know how, because it was him, he and I, but um, the different things that I've gone through as far as the financial assistance and the aid and different resources that, that have come my way and, and opportunities that have, you know, doors that have been opened because I am a student and the type of student I, 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 uh, I am. It's just been one of, it's just been one of those, one of those things that, uh, that just kind of worked out for me. So um I'm just, I'm just thankful. I'm thankful for the whole experience, you know, of being able to do what I've done. So when, what I want to do is um, we're going to take a quick break. When mm-hmm. we come back, uh, I'm going to invite you to, to get your ADHD rewired, have you sit in the hot seat. And you said that you wanted some help with some time management around things, I think in, in college, right? Yes. And um, being late to stuff. I'm always late. Yes. I'm known for that. That's a, that's, a, yeah, that's a personality trait I have. Yes. So we're going to dig into that when okay. we come back. Okay. See you then. Turn good intention into amazing actions with the ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Group. This virtual video-based group coaching program meets three times a week. Improve your productivity, develop better habits, experience the true power of supportive accountability from members of our own tribe. Learn, grow, and connect. Learn more at ADHDrewired.com. I hope to see you there at ADHDrewired.com. And prepare to get your ADHD rewired. And we are back with Brandy Wynn. Said it yes. correctly this time. Yes, yes, yes. Brandy, during the break, we were talking a little bit about uh, about books. And you said that there was a book that was really sort of uh, influential for you as you were going through this kind of life transformation. Would you really quickly just share what this book is? And then we will invite you to sit in the hot seat. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I just almost forgot it. <laughs> that was funny. Um, the uh, the book that I was working with is Diana Van Zant. Um, I've read a series of her books. One of my good girlfriends, when we were like, I guess in our teens, or, no, I'm sorry, we were almost full grown. We were, we were women. Excuse me. I'm sorry. We were, we were grown. She recommended this book to me because I was just going through so many different things. Um, just young woman, just going through our, our, our things that we go through as ladies, becoming an adult. And uh, it was uh, the value of our value in the valley. And then also, so the other one, I think, is in the meantime. And what it was just basically speaking about was appreciating the journey that you're going to go through, um, embracing it. You know, the challenges, a lot of different things are going to come your way at different angles and just staying ready, staying grounded and understanding that it's only a storm. It's going to pass you know, soon. So that helped me out a lot because I, I just didn't know what to do. <laughs> I was like, I wasn't prepared. All right, we will get uh, links to those uh, to those books on uh, the show notes of this episode. And uh, of course, you can get a free audiobook download through Audible by going to audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired. Brandy, are you ready to uh, sit in the hot seat? I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's, let's see if we can help you out here a little bit. Okay. So lay out for me, what is the specific sort of challenge that, that you are having? Um, and let's see what we can do to, to come up with some uh, strategies for you. Okay. Well, hopefully my teacher doesn't listen to this. <laughs> so she won't know my truth, but okay. So currently I'm um, unemployed. So I have pretty much a free schedule. Now I'm taking two classes. So my thing is um, when I wake up in the morning and I uh, stay up too late, I stay up like to about five o'clock in the morning. So my, my yeah, it's, it's really bad, really bad. Uh, so um, you when just, I wake up- You just up, made a whole bunch of people go, oh man, at least I'm not that bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm known. I, I'm very, um, I'm very um, influential. I guess I would say uh, in social media. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people see my times and they're like, "How do you stay up so late?" You know, blah blah blah. So anyway, and you probably um, wonder, "How do you go to bed on time?" Right. I'm like, they say, I go to bed at nine o'clock. I'm like, oh my gosh, because we live um, here in uh, in Virginia. I'm in Hampton Roads area of Virginia, so it's a military town. So everybody kind of goes to bed early. So for me. Um, Time management wise, when I get up in the morning, um, knowing that I have assignments, uh, 
do by Sunday. I have uh, like a Thursday I have to do a discussion post. Managing these assignments, um, seeing when the teacher announces them, it's like one or two assignments. They seem pretty easy, but for some strange reason, I'm not able to complete them. And Sunday, I'm just stressed out uh, time and I'm, I'm good under pressure. It's like I have to have that pressure beating me, that time, you know, beating down on me for, for me to get it completed. So sometimes my stuff is late. And it's like, how is it late when I had all this time to do it? So what's the downside for you of the pressure? Uh, if I have like um, sometimes um, I've been at a uh, significant potential, significant others, um, you know, they've been in my company. I've been in their company. And it's like at the understanding of my my schedule my school schedule. Mm -hmm. So me being a very social person, I want to have fun. I want to go out and have party with my friends mm -hmm. and um, like it's summer right now and I'm not able to. And because of that, um, I understand I'm responsible. I'm doing my work and work has to be done first, but I've had the whole week to do it. So why did I get it done? You know what I mean? <laughs> why did I, and I, and I, I didn't seem to procrastinate. I did some work on it, but the task is, wasn't completed, you know? Tell me your process. So you, the assignment is given when? Oh boy, here we go. Okay, the assignment is given uh, on Monday. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, you, excuse me, you're notified of the exact assignment um, each week on Monday. And, and that's then, like a push notification or email or. Uh, well, we have a uh, in, intranet type of uh, system. Mm -hmm. that we, meaning the uh, Saint Leo students, we all log into Learning Studio. Okay. And so, so that step you're good with, you log in there on time and. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and then when you go into that, uh, go into the system, the teacher posts the information there for the students and there's, um, well, so, um, let me, let me start uh, rewind back. These classes, this class I'm, I'm discussing is a uh, distance learning class. Mm -hmm. I already have challenges with that because of, you know, the attention. Deficit. So with the um, with them being distance distance learning, meaning that they're online courses, the information, the body of it, uh, of the studies for my subject, everything's online. So everything's electronically there, you know, um, all the literature and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. you know, my, my book and everything's there accessible online. When he or she posts the information on a Monday, we're supposed to have a discussion posted or, you know, uploaded or what have you to our our site so our other students can see our other peers classmates what, what have you uh by thursday it's very difficult for me to get everything together read the material understand what exactly they're looking for and then have it done by thursday even though i'm medicated i still have difficulties with the uh distractions i have a lot of different distractions that come in during the day so do you know if you're you're waiting to the kind of the quote unquote last minute, um, mm -hmm. how often do you get it in sort of just at the at the deadline? Uh, two years. <laughs> I'm sorry. For two, for two years, I've been doing it for two years. But are you getting it in, though? Yes. How, like, so what I mean is how often is it late and how often is it? Oh, okay, well, lately, lately. And I don't know if it's because of my age, maybe some women things with my mind or something like that, my body. But um, lately, it's been a challenge. Plus the summer. And for some reason, this summer, I want to enjoy my summer. So uh, most of the time when I get in there, it might be we have a grace period. Uh, so it has to be in my Sunday, but she gives you until Wednesday. If it's not done by Wednesday in there and you haven't written, you know, send her a note, he or she a note uh, and let them know and inform them, then um, points are, you know, it's deducted by points. So several times lately, it's been a week, I uh, mean, sometimes even two weeks and it might be a missed assignment or it might just be um, that it's, um, I say missed meaning that something because of all the different things I had to turn in, I just didn't do it. I over, you know, I miss, miss, you know, missed seeing it. Uh, and then some of them have been uh, assignments to where as um, it's been late. I knew the assignment. I started on it. I have a body or shell of it. I just didn't really fully understand it. And I had to do more research. And I explained that to the teacher. So you, you get the assignment, you, mm -hmm. you begin the assignment, but then it sounds like you get stuck. Stuck. And it really is stuck because the material, not as an excuse, but the material is, is I'm not reading a book per se that I have in hand in person. I'm just going online and reading the information. And for me, um, since this, this particular one, I don't want to go to a classroom and learn the information like mm -hmm. one -on 
one. I'm a, I'm a visual person, I'm a visual learner. And uh, so since it's, a, it's this, yeah, this person, this lady, <laughs> this doctor, professor online, you know, someplace, for some reason, I just don't connect very well with it and I don't identify with it. So I'm pretty much having to be self-taught. Okay. So a couple of things come to mind. I'm just writing some notes down as we're okay. doing this. So how long does it take you to ask the, the clarifying questions to your professor? Oh, good question. I never do <laughs> because, because of the fact that honestly, when I read the information and I really take the time and, and this is a process that I have to do because when I, when I review it, the, okay, so I get it on Monday. When I review the information or, or the assignment, I know exactly what they're, what they're saying. I know that I haven't read the material. And so I'm honest with myself because trust me, they're going to be honest with me because they can see that what I do and don't do. I um, chastise myself uh, or discipline myself. I'm, you know, I'm very self-disciplined in that uh, How so? Meaning that I spank my own hand. I know that I didn't read the information and I don't want he or she to tell me because my, my point won't be valid because what I'm getting ready to do is I'm getting ready to beg, <laughs> plead for more time. Okay. So, so let's break this down a little bit. Okay. So you have to you have to read a bunch of material and then engage in a conversation. Is that yes? We re- you, you read the material. Once you read the material, how much you- material do you have to read? Uh, I want to say it's about uh, probably about a page, a page or two. Okay, and this is online text. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Um, do you print that out or do you read it off your computer? <laughs> I love you. I print it out sometimes, not all the time. Does it help you when you print it out? Yes, it does. Okay. So, <laughs> so, and so what, what is the, um, if we can sort of get really sort of clear on the, the, yes. um, the thinking process of okay. what, why sometimes do you print it out? Why sometimes do you not print it out? Honestly, because uh, before printing paper and then printing ink, <laughs> I mean, because I, I do everything at home and I was getting like, I wanted to, I was like cost savings. I was tired of, you know, having the information. And then I believed uh, as I've just started taking distance learning courses that I could see the information visually and I could retain it. I didn't think I had to have it, but I learned trial and error that it is best for me to print it out. I don't care how much paper it is. I need to see it. I need to touch it. I need to feel it. So what if you mapped out for yourself almost like a step-by-step guide of the actions that you need to take to help yourself be successful. So like printing your article out, like as soon as that assignment is is given, don't even bother looking at it online, just you print it out. So now it's in hand. Okay. 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 Um, And so it's, it's looking at how then can you remember to do that? What I do also is a, uh, these are my, these are my better days. I would do a, a checklist. Okay. I would, yeah, I put together like a Microsoft Office. I'm, you know, I just got all the new stuff. So Microsoft Office has like a uh, weekly assignments type of thingy and then doing a checklist. And then that way I knew. It seemed to me very elementary. Um, and I felt like, goodness gracious, it's like so many steps. But mm-hmm. if it works, it works. <laughs> you, know, it's, you know what I mean? It does do work for me. Do you have a sense of how long each step takes you? So like, let's say you say a, a page or two of reading, how long does that take you? Uh, for me, <laughs> it takes about 30, 30, 45 minutes, you know? Okay. And have you tracked that before? No, I've never done. I've never have yet. That's a good thing to do. No, I haven't. I've never so done. I would really encourage you to, to track that because one of the things that, that allows you to do if, if, so let's say you print it out and you know that say one page of, you know, whatever font at this, this spacing takes you say, I don't know, 10 minutes to read just for example. Okay. Right? So now you can accurately predict based on doing it a few times if you're tracking it. So when you're planning out like how long is this going to take, mm-hmm. you know, one of the challenges is, is that we have this like really interesting time optimism. Yes. Right? Right? It's, or, is it, or as I like to call it, misplaced optimism. Yes, yes, yes. Right. right, right. So by by becoming really clear as how long each step takes, then you can Actually, you know, people talk about, well, begin with the end in mind. And it's like, it sounds great, but, you know, myself included, sometimes think, well, how do you actually do that? But for things that are repeatable, like mm-hmm. reading, right, okay. you you can accurately predict how long that will take you. Okay. Right. So then you can sort of begin that planning process um, and include like, how long does it take you to actually log on to your, your intranet 
get that assignment and print it out. Like, how long does that take you? I want to say less than uh, probably like between five and eight minutes because I have everything um, set up uh, with the uh, the login pr- portion. So it's pretty much just uh, it's already you know, keyed in there. Okay. Automatic. Right. So then do you have to sort of break down what the assignment is or is it kind of clear? When I read, when I review the information that, she, that she's asking for some strange reason, the first time I read it, it seems like it's jar. It's like it's all mixed up together. You know, I, I can't understand it. And then when I go back after several days, of course, because, you know, time is ticking now and now I'm coming down to the ending time. I read it. And for some reason, it just it's, it's clear. And I don't know why it always does that for me. The first time I review it, it's just like, where is she getting this information? And then once I, I, the punch time is here, I say, you know what? I'm tired. I'm frustrated. Let me just start from the beginning, you know, clear, clear my mind and just kind of refocus. And for some reason, it just looks, it looks clear. I can understand it. When you're reading, Mm -hmm. what's your process? Are you just reading or do you take notes while you're reading? Like what Ah, do you do? I guess I I read to, um, I just read the fine print. Like get to the point, you know, <laughs> I'm not reading for, I'm not reading for depth or anything like that or, or, or comprehension. I just read to see is due by what date Sunday. Okay. What exactly Exa- example three and four. Okay. How do you do it? You know, and then I Google, I Google. <laughs> well, and, and, that, and that's fine. We live in a world of Google, right? Yeah, it's, it's, thank it, you, Google. Thank you for my degrees, Google. <laughs> well, you know, and seriously, and I think there's value to looking at, at, uh, the ability to sometimes understand information is based on being able to see it in multiple ways. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that can be really helpful. Um, one of the things that really helped me as a, as a student is when I sort of let go of the idea of, I don't really care what my grades are. And yes. I looked at, I want to learn this information. Right. right? When yes. I did that, my grades got increasingly better and better. Mm, okay. Because it's because when you start looking at information and thinking about, okay, well, how can I apply this? Like, what is this, you know, what does this information sort of mean for me in the bigger picture? I think then it takes a different, lives differently in our mind. It's sort of the idea of like, when someone tells you to do something that doesn't make any sense, like how motivated are you to do it? Right. Not at all. (laughs) And if, uh, and if someone tells you to do something that you don't, you don't think makes sense and you ask why, are you challenging them or you just want to understand why, why do you need to do it? What's, what's the reasoning? Right. For clarity purposes. Yes. Right. Right. And so when we are looking at assignments that just sort of feel like, Oh, do I really need to do this. When's this due? Like you're just taking instruction and following orders. And that is not who you are. Right. And see, and because of my track history with the schooling, um, it shows that I can complete uh, the work. So for me, and it's also what's, what's of interest to something with the numbers and financial type things. Horrible, horrible student. I mean, wait, wait Brandy, you want to go on to be an MBA? An MBA? Yeah, no, right. No, no, no. We, we need to have another conversation later on. Right, right, right. <laughs> I'll be back on, I'll be back on podcast, you know, next the breakdown. You, you, you yeah. might, you might be better suited to, you know, how to do really good hiring and delegating of the tasks that are better, you know, right. better that you need those skill sets for and I know. focus on your creator genius. I know, <laughs> so. no, I know. I know. It, it's just that. And the, and the thing, like my marketing courses, of course, cause they're so you know, fun. They're exciting. I'm, and it's expressive. It's my field. I love it. Um, anything done with computers. Like right now I'm doing marketing, uh, social media. Love it. I identify with it. Anything I identify with, I stay up. That's my four or five o'clock in the morning, t- you know, work my analytical, anything dealing with graphics and anything dealing with math. Uh, sciences, horrible student. Mm. And I am heavily challenged. And I've been lucky up to this point to have everything one on one, meaning I'm in the classroom on ground courses. But these distance learning courses that I have to take because of the availability of the class are just the way that things are. The, the advisor and the instructor have already told me you have it is a challenge for you, Miss Wynn. And that's one of the main reasons why I stopped uh, working was because I was burnt out and I had a goal and I needed to you know, accomplish it by a certain time. So I stopped. But good gracious, it has been very, very difficult. What's the community like online for your class? Like, is there someone that you can maybe partner up with to uh, get some kind of accountability to get things done on time? 
I probably could um, besides the teacher. The only thing is uh, I'm very social and I don't want to say I don't have a life. I do have a life, but I don't have a lot of the like day to day tasks. Most people work for one. Um, most people are employed um, and it seems as though they have families. You know, we do our introductions and we meet each other you know, in, in community. Um, I'm very social. Hi, I'm Brandy. You know, my picture might be up there. You know, I'm very accessible. Here's all my information because of the fact that I know we're going to have to pro- probably partner up in groups and things like that. And I don't see these people every day, every day or every week like my other classes. And so with me, I'm very open. Everybody else is pretty much just stand off. It's like, hey, how are you? Everybody's frustrated and tired and, you know, their they're time in, you know, time management for them is very difficult because they have a family cook dinner uh whatever household duties or you know responsibilities they have things they have to do me uh, i don't have anything to do <laughs> during the day i just get up in the morning do my homework that used to be my other life that was my life before summer <laughs> before summer came into my life oh so, yeah one one of the things that um i've been thinking about sort of structuring your your time mm-hmm. um and, and i would just you know Going back to the, the idea of connecting with others, I, I would look at ways that you could, because it seems that you're motivated by social connection. Yes. Right? <laughs> I'm very social so, so what can you do to, to bring that into a distance learning environment? Well, timing wise, when we have group presentations, I'm speaking to my group and just kind of expressing myself because it's online and sending emails. That's pretty much you know what we do. Uh, luckily, since I am social with my on ground courses, I've just spoken to a lot of people. I did a survey like I was in marketing research one one course and uh, I found some of the students who were in my courses that were online. It just so happened that they were in my community, like they were going to class in the same center I was at. And so when I found that out, we just kind of partnered up together and buddied up together and helped each other. But that doesn't happen quite often. And plus I do all the legwork. Like I find out, Hey, you, what class are you taking? So I'm I'm everybody's friend. Everybody knows me. (laughs) You know, they all know my name. All right. Going back then, switching back to the, the, the planning side of it. Something that I learned from, uh, from Mary D. Sklar's work, and I've had her on the podcast a while back was, so when you have something that is due on a specific date. Okay. That's not the day it should be done on. (laughs) <laughs> you know, so having the due date and the done date actually be separate dates. Okay. Okay. Right? Because it's like, in addition to technology issues, life issues, it's like, we have ADHD and it's like, we're going to yeah. underestimate how long things take and we're yes. going to forget stuff. And so I think looking at that framework and almost having it be a, a, a rule set of, yes. okay, when something is due, that means I put due dates on the calendar, but then I also like a day or to before that is the done date. Right, right, right. That, and that's that's a good thing to do. I even have gr- good girlfriends. Who we're supposed to go, you know, get prepared and get you know for different events that we're supposed to go to. They trick me. The time is, you know, the timing for the event is seven thirty. Like they'll say to me that I have to be there by six thirty, and then they know I won't show up until like seven. So they'll do different things, you know, different strategies because because of I'm, I'm never on time, and they know that about me. So okay, let's go there a little bit. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now I'm having an ADHD moment because what I want to do before we go there is I want to ask you, based on what we just talked about, are there one or two things that you want to maybe commit to doing based on our on the discussion we just had? Uh, I want to commit to managing my time better. <laughs> That's real vague. Yes. Let's, yeah. let's be specific. Okay. Being specific um, is completing my assignments uh, prior to the due date. Be even more specific. Okay, even more specific than that is with the assignments, when I, re- when I review the assignments, then um, adding them to a checklist of some sort or a calendar or some, something like that. Okay, so you're going to put it into a, a, a checklist or calendar. Yes. Uh-huh. And how many hours before that assignment is actually due do you want to mm-hmm. have that assignment actually done? My target usually, uh, since everything is always done, due on Sunday, Mm-hmm. Uh, the larger portion of it. My target is always Friday. That's my, that's my target because of the fact that you know, and, and it depends on what I have going on that week. But usually it's, it's Friday. And does, do you think that works for you? Uh, yes, it, it has to because I want to go someplace. <laughs> the weekend, I, the weekend I, want some, I want to go someplace. I have to do it by Friday or else I'm going to be stuck. Okay. Know? Would you be willing also to um, uh, track each step of the assignment that you do with the time of it? Yes, yes, I can do it. <laughs> I can, I can it. tell how exciting it yeah. is. Oh, yes, I can do it. <laughs> okay, and so 
on that, grab a, like a stopwatch. Don't just look at the clock because think about this. So part of ADHD involves our working memory. So say we look at the clock and it's like 2.15. Then we, uh, all right, so 2.15, I'm going to start this work. And you look back up the clock, it's three o'clock. And you have this moment of like, well, what time was it when I look at the clock? Right, 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 right. right. So you, you actually hit that, that timer. And just having that, a timer like that is actually okay. in sight for many people actually yes. helps kind of keep that focus and can sort of artificially give you that, that hurry sensation that, yes. that you s- seem to thrive on anyways. Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> I mean, just on my desk, I have two different uh, timers that I can use because I just know how important time uh, tracking time really is. Okay. Okay. I okay. can try that. Okay. Okay. So tracking time. Yeah, thank you for taking notes for me. Not forget. Because <laughs> well, so I'm going to follow up with you and you're going to you. come back here and you're going to share you. with us how you did. Yeah, how I had a mental breakdown because I couldn't keep my, my time management. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, keep in mind, failure yeah. is just feedback, right? If you right. set a goal and you don't achieve it, it's just right. feedback, right? Right, right, right. right? If you yeah. learn from it, it's, you know, it's, then it's no longer failure. There's value. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. right, right. All right. With a few minutes we have left. You okay. have a hard time getting places on time. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> your, your, your facial response to that was like, that's the understatement of the century. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Brandy Wynn, late to funeral, birth, everything. You know, I'll be, I'll, I'm late everywhere. Okay. So I, I do want to say that I very much used to be the same. Like, I don't think I made it to a single class in my undergrad on time once. Right. Okay. Okay. So, and I think back to that now and I was like, oh man, like I, I just sort of assume my professors maybe just thought it was kind of like, oh, there was Eric. Like, and I think about it now, I'm like, oh man, they probably hate that I did that because it had to be so disruptive. Like, yes. anyway, so we, I, it's, it's a common struggle. It's something that I, I know for myself, I would say I'm, I'm 89% there, oh, which is really good. Right. Congratulations. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> Right, All right. Right, right. So a couple of things. When you're getting ready to leave somewhere, mm-hmm. what are the lies that you tell yourself? <laughs> uh, that I'm going to be on time? Oh, you mean, you mean getting ready to, to go to the place? So as you're getting ready to go, do you okay. ever, uh, like, are you basically all ready? And then you said, oh, I can, I'll just check my email real quick. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, social media queen. My phone is just like a, a notification hopper. I mean, like it, the sound, the sounds and the effects, the lighting up of the screen. It's just, it's like a carnival because I'm, I'm connected to so many different things. So I say, oh, you know what? Uh, I mean, the girls for lunch, I'll just check, you know, Facebook because somebody just tagged me or, or made a comment or I'll just log into, you know, my, uh, my favorite is my, or my emails. My, well, I, I had a lot. I used to have a lot. So I tag, you know, look in there real quick at a brief email, then it leads to some other link. And then 30 minutes later, it's like, hey, guys, this is Brandy. And they're like, hey, Brandy. I'm like, I'm going to be a little bit late. Oh, we already knew. We already knew. You know what I mean? <laughs> we already knew you're going to be late. You know? okay. okay. So I have a, can offer a solution for you that will allow okay. you to check all your social media, all your email, oh, my goodness. and still actually get there on time. Okay. Okay. You're going to leave at the, the amount of time that you, so the amount of time that you spend looking at that and that's, and there, are you on iPhone or are you Android? Android. Okay. So, okay. So I'm, I'm an iPhone person, but you get, there's one advantage for you because there's an okay. app called rescue time that can track everything you do online and break it down into different categories. And it does it in the background and it will work on Android. It doesn't work on, on iPhone. You have to enter it manually. And we all know that that's not going to happen. Right. Right. Um, right. So. The first thing I want you to do is set up that that software, and it's it's a okay. premium kind of software. Okay. So the first thing you're going to find out is how much time are you actually spending checking Ooh. those posts, uh, and it will let you know how long you're on those things for. Oh boy. Okay. Then you're going to figure that time out, and what you're going to do is you're going to shift that and use that time once you arrive at that place. Okay. okay. So it's, it's sort of like your reward for for getting there on time so you're not going to have this fear of missing out because you're not going to miss out right you're going to have this this you know 20 30 minutes of just like you get to chill in the car and look through your social media 
profile. Wow, that'd right. be nice. <laughs> be on time for once, right? There is a tool on Amazon. I think it's called uh, K Safe or Kitchen Safe. It's okay. a clear Tupperware container that you could set a timer for and it locks it. Okay. So right. if you need to get ready and you have to leave the house in 30 minutes, <laughs> you could put your phone in that for like, for, you know, for 25 minutes, right? And, and, e and even do it for like when you already have to leave and you just bring it that whole, the whole thing with you, right? And at some point in your journey, like it'll unlock. Oh my goodness. That's like, uh, for lack of a better term, death. <laughs> no, like, but, but here's the thing. Me. Oh, no. <laughs> right, I know. And it's like when, when, we, when we recognize, oh, my gosh, like it's like no one's dying here, but we're having that reaction. It's like it is sort of an addiction. And I and I, it's something that I struggle with, too. You know, it's like the, the, the I get that real bad case of just one more thing. Itis. Yes. Yes. Right. So this is a tool that really can help you outsource willpower. Oh my gosh, I have none. Okay. But, okay. Then, but for, you, you do, do, do have it. willpower, right? Yeah, I do. I but, do. But when you tell me that you're staying up until 5 a.m., right? You, when you finally go to bed and then you finally wake up, like you are not starting with a full tank of willpower, which is when we look at what ADHD is, it's the sort of our, of our executive functions, right? It's our okay. planning, our organizing, our task initiation, our, our inhibiting distractions, our, our, uh, sustaining our focus on something that's that's kind of boring uh, over something else right? right and so when we look at willpower it's a limited resource right and right. every time that you know chime goes off that notification goes off like one you're getting a hit of dopamine every time you, you check it right which is what our the adhd brain is sort of craving right, right? But, but the other it's it's if you're sitting here thinking oh i shouldn't check it i shouldn't check it uh, i'll just check it for a second like that decision-making process, which takes all of about three seconds, is draining your executive functioning. Mm. Right? It's, it's sort of like you're filling up your gas tank while you have a big gouging hole in your gas tank. Okay. Okay. Right? And so it's, it's to, it ends up being a net loss. Okay. Okay. Right? I promise I don't feel like the world's going to come to an end if you put your phone down for 30 minutes. Right? But right, it, right. It's, it, not, it's not, it it's not, it's not, right. It's not, I'm not that important. <laughs> and you know what? You can also try to make a game out of it. Post on Facebook that Brandy Wynn, can I do it? Going, unplugging for 30 minutes. Right, it's, right, you know, right. So right. then you're adding an element of accountability and kind of making fun, you know, of the whole process. Right. Oh, okay. that's good for my marketing. <laughs> yeah. like, now, do you use the app Waze? No, we, I was just talking to my family about that. No, I, I don't. I, I just do. I'm just regular Google. Uh, okay. Google. So one of the things that's nice about Waze and, and you know, well, Google is now, is now uh, Waze is now owned by Google. Right. So if right. you have the location of where you're going to say meet your friends mm -hmm. um, and it's in your calendar and you give Waze access to your calendar, uh -huh. you will get notifications from Waze to pop up on your phone and say, you need to leave now. Oh, yes, yes. I had that uh, um, Google before, I guess, before they acquired Waze. They used to do that. And when they did that, because, of course, they, I mean, I almost tracked everything I did. It was a help for me, a large help. It was, you know, because they knew every place I was going to go. And then even with me, when I would do a lot of traveling, I used to be in travel. I used mm -hmm. to do travel. Too. <laughs> so uh, when I would do that, do that, that helped me. But what happened was because I didn't adhere to it all the time, then I would just push it because it become annoying. It's like, it's like a snooze button. I just push it and say, okay, I am late. I'm going to be delayed. But it tried to keep me, you know, focused, you know, and it did it most of the time. But a so, challenge. <laughs> so looking at all the ways that you can get sucked down that rabbit hole when you're trying to get ready. Yes. And, you know, you, you, so you live by yourself, right? So yes. you can put all kinds of reminders all over your house if you want to. Right, 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 right. So you know what the, the, the tendency is, and our tendency does not need to be our actions. Right. right so right. The, the tendency is when you're getting ready to go, like you're, you're late. So having reminders like an hour before, you know, you need to start getting ready. That mm -hmm. reminds you of like, you know, not to check the, the you know, Facebook and in your email and your other social media types of things. And you're, you're a pretty creative person. Right. Can you create your own ad campaign to convince you to not check social media and stuff and do other things when you're trying to get ready on time? 
Yeah, I, I could. I could. I've done it, you know, I've, for several people, so I'm sure I can do something like that. Mm-hmm. I would actually love to see that because I think that would help other people too. Thank you. I, I, <laughs> I, sh- I should have said yes. <laughs> I took the red or the blue pill. I should have said yes. Yeah. Completing it might be a challenge, people. So don't wait for this. It, it, All right. <laughs> it can be as uh, as we, I forgot who said this, and I'll, I'll, I'll bleep part of this out, but the shitty first draft. Yes, yes, yes. Well, get it out there. Yes, that's what I do. That's what I always do. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very beautiful effort. <laughs> you see, you can tell where I'm trying to go, but you just don't know how in the world I'm going to get there. But you see some progress. So and it can be even be spend 15 minutes, set a timer for 15 minutes okay. to create this ad campaign. Okay. Okay. It's not like a plan. Let's okay. try it. Right. I need, I do need help. All right. So Brandy, what I'm going to have you do as soon as we, uh, we wrap this up, cause we're, we're right at the end here okay. is you're going to go back to my website and you're going to okay. schedule a five minute follow up call with me. Okay. Right. And we're going to record that call. Okay. And you're going to be able to share with people, uh, with, with the listeners, um, how you did on uh, managing these assignments Okay. and getting places on time. Okay, guys. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it my best effort. <laughs> okay. 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 Thank you so much. Brandy, any final thoughts you want to leave uh, listeners with? And uh, also, you can let people know where they can get a hold of you, blog, stuff like that. Um, I would just say uh, to each and every listener, uh, God bless you all. It, it is a journey. It is a process, but it can be done. We are all winners and um, it's your journey to find the winner in yourself. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I just forgot. I just changed it. The handle uh, would be at gone G O N as a Nancy E as an Eagle with gone with win w y n as a nancy n as a nancy e so gone with win is my handle or my my user id and um so all of that is me anything you see with that that's me and we'll post all of the links where people can get a hold of you oh, on our show notes page thank and, you. Uh, and it'll be in even your app so if your app supports uh supports links just tap on the uh ADHD rewired logo as long as you're subscribed and it opens up and you'll see uh show notes right there Oh, great. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all the time. Brandy, thank you so much. And I, and I wish you best of success over the next few weeks. And I'm looking forward to checking back in with you. Thank you, sir. Take care and have a great day. Thanks. You too. Okay, bye-bye, guys. This has been Eric Tivers, and I want to thank you for listening. And congratulations for making it to the end. ADHD Rewired is more than just a podcast. We are a community focused on learning, growing, and connection. The website is ADHDrewired.com. You can find summaries and additional resources for each episode, learn more about the ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Group, and more. It's all at ADHDrewired.com. Don't just be a passive listener. Be an active member of the community. Submit your request to join our free and growing community on Facebook. Watch for a message from me on Facebook because I screen everyone before they come in the group. Podcasts do change lives. You can make a difference in someone's life by spreading the word about this podcast. Share it online or share it with a friend. If you're a member of Chad or any other ADHD support group, let people know about this show. And if you really loved this episode, please hit share on your podcast player. One of the biggest things you can do to support this podcast and help other people discover it is to leave an honest rating and a review on iTunes or Stitcher. If you can't figure out how to do it, message me on Facebook or through my website, and I'll be happy to walk you through it. Looking for more ways to listen and learn? Get a free audiobook and a 30-day free trial at Audible by using my affiliate link at audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired. Not sure where to start? Start with Brene Brown's The Gift of Imperfections or her six-hour recorded workshop, The Power of Vulnerability. This is Eric Tivers reminding you that when you spend time to plan, you will save time that you could spend later. Until next time.